The Moon, 89.1 WGZS Cloquet, radio service from the Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior, Chippewa. Melissa, tell me a little bit about this action that took place at Congressman Nolan's office today. Well, we um, gathered today, and then we went into his office, and his staff was completely supportive. We just went in there to let them know where we stood with the the sequestration cuts for Head Start and what that would mean for the children and for the families. Um, With Representative Nolan, it's not like we really have to go in there and convince him because he is really supportive of Head Start. So, um, as you know, he was in Washington and had a letter prepared for us. And so we had families there that just let them know uh, their their personal stories about what Head Start meant to them and to their families. And we had um, two families, actually, that had similar stories of how Head Start brought to attention for them how their children ended up having autism. And so for them... They discovered those learning um, disabilities or those, it brought to attention those problems early on, so they were able to discover that where they might not have found that out until later on when they were having more issues. So I, here's where I have to disclose again that I work part-time in radio doing these things, and I work part-time in the early childhood programs here on Fond du Lac Reservation, including the, which is part of the Head Start programs. And so... Um, these children that had an identified disability when they're, or deficit, uh, that were disabilities troubling, I think, sometimes. But Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't know which to use there either. But uh, so they identify that they have, they are, they're on the autism spectrum. And so that's going to save problems and maybe money for the community that's, you know, doing interventions for those kids later. Is that kind of what you were saying? Well, it's going to it's going to save those children also in their in their families from you know having to have, having to go through all this time and energy of not knowing what is going on with their child and and here they are struggling not knowing what it is that they're having these issues with mm-hmm. and Head Start was able to help them identify that. You mentioned before that you have two kids and you have one child. Tell me about the child that's in Head Start now. Um, my daughter that is in Head Start now, you know, when when I first put her into Head Start, I knew nothing of Head Start. Um, I just thought that she was going to go to school. And when she went for her early childhood screening, you know, I was very proud that she didn't have any of the emotional issues, and she didn't have, um, she excelled at her early childhood screening. She was doing really well and and was off the charts, so to speak, as what they were wanting. But in the summer before she had started, she had suffered an emotional trauma. And so when the teacher came to our home, which was kind of awkward for me, I didn't know what was going on with that. I mean, it was... It was bizarre to me well, to have you, that experience. Wh- why do you got to come to my house? What's all this yeah. about? I've been a Head Start yeah. dad, too, so I, I've been there. Uh-huh. It was really weird. And when she came to our home, I I disclosed about the trauma my daughter had experienced. And um, it, I didn't understand because I had never experienced the kind of support the teacher said, well, you know, we have a family advocate that, you know, we can talk to about this and we can have her help you out with that, and we have a mental health specialist or support that can, we, we can help you out with this. And I'm going, well, why are you talking about helping me out? You know, I thought you were going to educate my child. And it was really interesting that they were talking about supporting me and supporting my daughter emotionally when I thought you were going to educate my child. Mm-hmm. And so within the first week of school, that family advocate contacted me and said, you know, the teacher told me about this incident that had happened with your daughter, and I have contacted the mental health um, specialist, and she's going to contact you. And I had been working in the community with all the community resources that were available to me, 
um, through the city. And I had been contacting through the phone book and everywhere else and through those community resources trying to get a therapist set up with my daughter and myself. And there was a three-month waiting list. And um, the mental health specialist said, you know, let me try to help you with this. And within a week, within two weeks of school, they had a therapist calling me at home saying, let me see you and your daughter. Let me get this taken care of for you. And within the first month of school, my daughter and I both had appointments to see a therapist. Mm -hmm. I had been working so hard to get this stuff situated. And Head Start took care of all of it for us. I never thought that the school, you know, who was going to just take care of education for us, was going to emotionally support us in a way that we would be able to, as a family, start healing. Now, so, mm -hmm. so I'm getting, I'm getting loud and clear that this program has benefited you, and um, that it's helped you out. But just um, forgive me for sort of broadening the question a little bit beyond your, you know, your personal situation, and to say, well, I guess this is kind of personal. What what is it about you and your family that is more important than you know ge future generations that are going to be paying down the national debt that's incurred by this you know this is government spending and it's part of the sequester where there where there will be you know if nothing else you know unless the politicians have another resolution um, Head Start will be cut but so will the rest of the national budget. Well, if there's anything worth investing in, it would be children's education, because who is it that's going to be leading our great country in the future? I mean, all of these children are our future. And it's not just my personal story. There are thousands of stories just like my own. And one of the most important things is family. And this program supports families and supports children and families, you know, that can be there for their children and help educate their children. This program takes the education from the classroom and brings it home so these parents can, you know, rebond with their children and establish that, that family unit again and, you know, and heal these families from many different things. And so, you know, any sort, and it also brings together communities, and so any kind of program that is all-encompassing like that is going to be basically money that is investing in all of our futures. And I don't think that there's anything that is worth spending money on more than that. It's, a, it's, any, it's more of an investment than anything. So, Melissa, I'm going to um, read to you from this uh, letter that... Um, we reached out to Congressman Nolan to say, you know, this protest is happening at your office, and, you know, we wanted to give him an opportunity to comment, and I think you've seen a copy of this letter, too. Let me just read some of this uh, to you, and I'd just like to get a response from you. Uh, he's welcoming you to the office. Thank you for your concern and your activism in protesting sequester cuts to Head Start. That amount, uh, the amount to some $5 million here in Minnesota over the remainder of 2013. As a former teacher and director of the 19-unit North Central Minnesota Head Start program, I would be protesting right along with you if I were not here in Washington today. $5 million is a number we can measure. What we cannot measure is the effect on the lives of thousands of children whose ability to live up to full potential in life could be profoundly altered by limiting their early education through Head Start. Now, how does that contrast with your views or what you're, what you're trying to say? It doesn't. I mean, he, I think that Representative Nolan is, I think that it is great that he is right down the same alley as us, that he 100% supports the same thing. The only thing I would like to clarify is that it's actually $6 million, not five. Okay. The, one of the, the key points that he makes in this response to your group is he says, uh, he I don't want to put words in his mouth, but, well, this is a pretty clear statement here. We need to cut the debt with a scal scalpel, not a meat axe. The president agrees wholeheartedly with us, and we and together we are going to do everything within our power to restore cuts to Head Start 
and to so many other programs that serve middle-class working families, seniors, children, and those in need. So what he wants to do is, I guess with a scalpel, or I was going to say cherry pick, they want to pick which programs are going to be cut and which um, will continue to receive funding or even receive more funding. Is that your understanding? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that when you look at the federal government, and this might be my personal opinion, but I think that there are other things that they can choose from to be cutting than looking at things that are more sensitive than our children. You're saying there's, you said before, there's nothing more sensitive than our children. Exactly. I mean, I think that they have a lot of other things that, you know, could they could look at to cut from mm-hmm. and from our children. And, you know, Head Start serves, you know, families most at risk. 90% of enrollment is reserved for families at or below the federal poverty level and or eligible to receive public assistance. And 10% of enrollment is reserved for children with diagnosed disabilities. Um, it's it's a program that is there for people in need. And, you know, we have a very diverse population. I think that they, they can really look a little deeper when they're thinking about what they need to cut. And I, I, I don't know if maybe they know exactly what they're doing. So, which, which let's just say that all the leaders of Congress and the president are listening to this tiny low power FM station in Northern Minnesota, and they're going to hear your voice or there's that you are talking directly to them. What's the message that you want to send? You sent your message to Congressman Nolan. He, he says, I basically agree with you, but he says, you know, like, you know, he basically gives a political, you know, talks about politics that are stopping him. So if you wanted to speak to those politicians, what would you say to them as a Head Start parent? Well, well, let's let's look at some of the numbers. In 2012, Minnesota's 35 federally designated Head Start grantees served 15,461 families with 17,514 children. 49% of enrolled children were racially diverse. 31% spoke a primary language at home other than English. 13% had a diagnosed disability and 9% of families were homeless. Who do you think really needs these funds? How many of these children do you really think need these supportive programs? I think if you're going to cut some of these funds from someone or from programs, I think you need to look elsewhere. I think the people that need the money the most are these children. And I think that you need to, like, dig a little deeper and look at these programs a little bit longer and and take some time and listen to the families and the staff and all these people that are fighting for these children and and look look at the future of our country and and look at the the people that matter in the world the most, which are our children. And do what's right. Thanks, Melissa. Just one more question. I know you got to put your kids to down for their nap. What are the next steps for you and your group? Well, I can promise you that the one thing is that we won't give up. I mean, we'll we'll keep on fighting as long as we can. And um, Head Start is a very powerful group with a lot of very strong individuals and. And we'll never give up fighting for the children. And so no matter what happens, we'll keep plugging along and we'll rise up again. So that's what we'll be doing. Melissa, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And JP, thank you. I really appreciate you giving us this time. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.